Hello and welcome. Right now we are standing on top of the digester building at HRC's Atlantic Treatment Plant located in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Today we are going to go ahead and give you guys a tour of the newly installed THP and fog receiving facilities. And I'm going to go ahead and provide you with the six drivers as to why HRC decided to go with THP at the Atlantic Treatment Plant. So the first reason is that having the THP means there is significantly less storage capacity required at the plant. The cake solids will go from around 18% total solids to 30% total solids with about a 10% increase in volatile solids reduction. And this also results in better stacking without constructing higher sidewalls at the storage pads. The second reason is that THP will provide us with a class A quality biosolids with certainty. This includes minimal concern for regrowth, reactivation, and odors within the biosolids, and the Class A product opens more and closer land application sites, as well as other future beneficial reuse opportunities. The third reason is that the THP process is near energy neutral, and once the fog receiving facility is up and running, the process actually becomes energy positive. The fourth reason is that THP easily incorporates phosphorus release, resulting in struvite control and an improvement in dewatering. The fifth reason is that the THP process provides a good opportunity to have dewatered biosolids receiving from our other HRSD treatment plants. This holds huge potential for HRSD as we look at gradually shutting down our multiple hearth incinerators at other HRSD treatment plants. And finally, as I alluded to earlier in regards to the increased storage capacity, having the higher digester loading capability increases our current digester capacity. This capacity is increased by approximately two to three times the digester load when compared to conventional digestion without THP, thus allowing the receipt of raw biosolids from our other treatment plants. So there you have it, our six primary drivers for why we want THP here at the Atlantic Treatment Plant. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn you over to Todd, who's gonna take you on our virtual tour, and I really hope that you enjoy. Thank you. Hey, I'm Todd McGovern. I'm at the Atlantic Treatment Plant in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And this is the pretty much the beginning of the Canby. This is actually the solid screening. We have two units here. Uh, we run one lead, one lag, basically designed for about 290 gallons a minute each. Basically what you have here is a conveyor inside this vessel behind me with a screen wrapped around it, about five millimeter. So far, so good. Uh, we definitely want to keep the rags out of the Canby system. Okay, a little bit more about the screening presses. They're Hoover. Basically, you have an inlet and an outlet. It will drop into this conveyor. The conveyor takes it outside and will drop it into a dumpster for landfill and we'll go over that later. Here we are with another uh, process for the DMPW filter screening. Due to having a class A sludge, we cannot have any contaminants. So normally we use a lot of non-potable water at the plant. So now for the Canby process or the THP, we use uh, DMPW, which is disinfected, non-potable water. We run a residual basically with uh, hypochlorite of eight to 10 milligrams per liter. And from there, we'll put them through the filters that are behind me and uh, really good filters and they have a nice backwash system so we can ensure that we have uh, really nice clean water. Okay, this is a continuation of the process that we were just at with the screening presses. After the screening presses, uh, it went down into the conveyor. As the conveyor came outside, you'd come into two hoppers and we have these bags for odor control. And as you can see, the, the type of screens that we're getting, it's really a uh, really great process. On the top floor, we have the two DS706 uh, decanters. Uh, we're gonna be probably feeding anywhere from 150 gallons a minute to 250. Uh, we will be due, as we uh, increase the flows, we'll probably get the third centrifuge for the pre dewatering We're trying to run anywhere from uh, 18 to 22, and we also have uh, 
dilution flow. So if we get a little too dry, we'll be fine. We call this the mezzanine. It's underneath the centrifuges. You have the hoppers behind me that come down. The troughs that drop down into a cross screw that actually drops down to the sludge hopper down below. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, next part of the process. Uh, we just went over uh, the centrifuges. The centrifuges will dump into the hopper and the hopper is uh, connected to the CPEX pumps. We have two of them, uh, approximately 25 to 100 gallons a minute. As you see the size of these things, these things can really push some sludge. This is the uh, last process before the Camby, and these are called the pulper feed pumps. Um, so after this, I'm gonna turn it over to Dana Gonzalez, which will take you through the Camby process. Thanks, Todd. My name is Dana Gonzalez. I'm a treatment process engineer here at HRSD, and I'm gonna walk you through the Camby process now. So after we go through our pulper, pulper feed pump, that's gonna be feeding into our pulper, which is the first step in the Camby process. The pulper tank is really an equalization vessel. Uh, Camby is a batch process. So having this equalization vessel really allows us to keep all of the upstream equipment running regularly. So the other two reasons why we have the pulper is one is that we're preheating our solids. So we're taking the solids from room temperature up to about 90 to 100 degrees Celsius within the pulper tank. And that's using recy recycled steam from the flash tank, which is at the end of the system. The third thing that the pulper is doing is it's gathering all of our process gas, which can be pretty uh, smelly, and it's sending it to our process gas unit, which is on the second floor of the Canby skid. From the process gas unit, a little bit of additional treatment happens, and then we send that process gas into our in-service digesters. After we go to the pulper, we have uh, two duty-duty pumps that are either recirculating the solids in the pulper to help keep that efficient heating or feeding the reactors. So as I said, Canby is a batch process. So the reactors are being fed, then they're being brought up to temperature and pressure. We're holding 87, about 87 PSI, which is about 165 degrees C within the reactor. We hold that temperature and pressure for about 30, 20 to 30 minutes, and then, the, uh, then we go to the flash tank where our blowdown process happens. That's really where the magic of thermal hydrolysis happens because that's where we're disintegrating the cells when we go from this high pressure of 87 PSI back down to about atmospheric pressure. As I said earlier, we're taking steam off of the flash tank and sending it back to the pulper. So in that process, we're actually bringing those thermally hydrolyzed solids from about 165 degrees Celsius back to about 110, uh, 100 degrees Celsius. After a flash tank, we're gonna add some dilution water. And that's really because if you recall, we, we said that we were sending about 16% solids into the pulper. When we introduce all of that steam, we actually uh, reduce the solids content to about 13% in the flash tank. But we don't want to feed solids that's that high uh, in solids content right into our digester. So the dilution water is actually uh, disinfected non-potable water, or DMPW. Todd went through some of the, our screening process and our hypo addition upstairs. Um, we're adding that DMPW to just target somewhere between a 7 and 10% solid. After that, we send on to the scalping hex recirculation pumps, and we'll go walk over there, and I'll, I'll point out where those pumps are. All right, I'm standing here now in front of the flash tank. After the flash tank, we're adding disinfected non-potable water to bring our solids down to between 7 and 10%. Coming out of the flash tank, we're gonna go through our scalping hex recirculation pumps. Those are duty standby, and they're sending solids through one large loop. Part of that loop is actually sending solids through our scalping hex. So we're going from about 75 degrees Celsius down to a target temperature of 70 degrees Celsius through the scalping hex and then the solids go back and recirculate through on the suction side of the pump. All right, so after we go through the scalping hex, then we have the digester feed pumps, which are behind me here in blue. They're pulling off that scalping hex recirc line, 
and they're sending our feed through this manifold, which is splitting our feed and controlling how much flow is going into the digesters. After that, we feed into that digester recirculation loop that Dave is about to cover, and then we go through our cooling hexes, and we're gonna go over there and take a look at those next. All right, so after we designate our feed split here at the, the manifold, we're sending our feed up into the digester recirculation loop. After those two flows meet of our thermally hydrolyzed solids and our recirc solids, we send our, our solids through the cooling hex to do our final cooling step, where we bring our temperatures down between 40 and 42 degrees Celsius. Now these cooling hexes are, con are tube and tube configuration, and they're controlled similarly to the scalping hex using a three-way uh, cooling water control valve so that we're bringing in more cooling water when we need to bring the, the temperatures down lower. Um, our main is over here where we are bringing in our NPW as our cooling water system. And now I'm gonna go ahead and throw it over to Dave to talk a little bit more about our digester recirculation pumps. Thanks, Dana. I'm out next, uh, I'm out here by the digester recirculation piping. So this piping takes the solids that are from the digester back to the THP uh, process and it's blending the hydrolyzed solids uh, with the recycle, the return that's come back from the digesters, uh, about a four to one ratio, and it takes it and goes back into the digester. This, this helps maintain a temperature of about 40 to 42 degrees Celsius, uh, and the temperature of the, di of the digester runs in a mesothelic uh, state. This is, this is definitely needed to introduce the hydrolyzed solids, which is the food into the digester, uh, and, and to cause the mixing needed so that the, the bacteria and the food uh, get well mixed and the digesting can occur. We're in the steam boiler room and in this steam boiler room there's two components in here. The first one is the deaerator. The deaerator is used to remove oxygen out of the water prior to going into the boiler. How it's, how it's done is it takes the potable water that's coming over from the softener system It actually preheats the water to 225 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 5 psi. That water helps when it's heated like that, removes the oxygen out and it's fed over into the boiler. Over in the boiler right here, this is a Johnston boiler. The Johnston boiler uh, can produce 11.7 million BTUs uh, of heat per hour, which equates to about 12,000 pounds of steam. It runs between 175 and 200 PSI, which produces enough steam pressure to run the thermohydrolysis system. All right, we're in the, uh, the chemical feed room, and uh, this particular unit is the water softener system. There's two systems here. One is a duty system, and one is a standby system. What this does is it takes potable city water, and it runs through a softener system, and it removes the, the hard scale out of the water before it goes into the boiler. This is helpful to keep the boiler uh, from having any uh, maintenance uh, issues down the road. Um, so it uses salt, and a brine solution to charge the tanks. That water goes through the system and goes into the deaerator. Uh, behind me, there's two chemicals that we add. One is an oxygen scavenger, helps remove the oxygen out of the water prior to going into the deaerator. And the second one is, is a flocculant, helps kind of get that sedimentation that may be uh, residual in the water prior to going to the deaerator as well. Okay, thanks Dave. Uh, so here we're standing in front of our fog receiving facility. The reason why we have this fog receiving facility here is that we want to prevent a lot of the fog that could really get in the, in the way of, with some of our treatment processes down the line. We want to kind of segregate that fog away and send it into uh, our thermal hydrolysis process and into the digesters. So what happens here is the uh, fog delivery driver is going to hook up behind me to this quick connect and they will activate our screening system. That fog is gonna go through a rock trap and then it's gonna go through a screening process before it heads into our fog um, holding tanks. In the fog holding tanks, what we're really trying to do is just heat that fog up to about 55 degrees C and, uh, and keep it well mixed before it heads over to the uh, pulper feed. The mixture of the fog and what's coming out of the pulper feed pumps is gonna target about a 16% solids going into our Canby process. 
And we do have the ability here where if we don't have enough fog coming into the system that we can add hot MPW into the tank so we can keep that feed stream pretty constant going into the pulper. Um, so now we can go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the Canby PLC inside that does a lot of the control for the Canby system. All right, so here I am standing in front of one of our PLC control stations. We have two of these on site. The other one is over in our operator uh, control lab. What we can do here at the PLC is control all of the different unit processes for Canby. So I can go in and I can select the pulper and I can control different parameters. I can also see different alarms and historical alarms here. The way that uh, this system integrates with our distributed control system or our DCS is via permissives. So if Canby needs the pulper feed pump, say, which is controlled by our DCS, to start running, it will give a permissive that will then allow the DCS to turn the pulper feed pump on. So now that we've talked a little bit about the control here, I'm gonna go ahead and send it out to Crystal. All right, well that concludes our tour of the THP process here at the Atlantic plant in Virginia Beach. HRC thanks you for your time. We hope you enjoyed, and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact us. Thanks and have a great day.